What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the Prosper Show e-commerce mastery series, where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. They have an amazing conference with some of the top Amazon sellers and industry leaders like we have today. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran. It's application only. Today, I'm very excited. We have Iwan Mitre. He's founder of Seller Engine. He started selling on Amazon on Thanksgiving Day, 2001, from the attic of an old Victorian house in California. It sounds like a great movie. He founded Seller Engine Software just a year later in 2002 and released the first Amazon repricing and inventory management software. For over 15 years, they've helped thousands of Amazon sellers. The Seller Engine team represents nine nationalities. They speak 13 languages and work in three countries. Iwan, thanks for joining me. Thanks for inviting us. Is there any reason to sell something at a loss? Um, you know, like you're saying, some you sell for a profit, some you sell for a loss. Is there any mm-hmm. customer acquisition advantages to selling these items as a loss? Besides, like, let's say you just want to liquidate inventory. Obviously, you just want to get rid of it. But any customer acquisition advantages to selling at a loss do you, that you see on, on Amazon? Right. I mean, in a, you know, in a private label situation that you probably would want to sell at a loss at the beginning just to get people to get your mm-hmm. item to have a sales rank. Because if, if the item has a certain amount of sales, then Amazon will make it show up higher in search results mm-hmm. and so on. So if it's your, if it's your product, uh, and you control it, then you probably there's there's a business reason for selling it a lot mm-hmm. at different periods at different times. Yeah. Um, now, you know, but as long as again, as long as you keep track of your cost, you count that as marketing expense basically. I'm okay. I'm selling it as a loss as a way to increase uh, sales around increase awareness, search results, and then I'm I'm counting how much I'm spending and seeing. How much you know, if I can get it back by increasing the price later? Yeah. Um, so that that's what I would see as the as the reason to uh, a loss for a private label. If you're not in a private label situation, then um, there's a lot. If you don't control the supply, there's a lot less reasons to sell any other loss. Unless you know, if you if it's on Amazon and you're gonna hit, you're gonna get hit with long term storage fees. Um, then you may want to sell it, um, even though you're not getting back all your money because the alternative is not getting any of your money back. Or your alternative is getting hit with a bunch of other fees. Or it may be more expensive to get Amazon to destroy it uh, or to ship it back to you than it is to sell it um, for a lower price. So that would be another reason. Um, but And it, it depends. I mean, some something that people don't necessarily think enough about is that where else can I get value for this item? It's not just Amazon. Uh, it, you may be able to sell it retail, to get, bring it back and sell it retail, where some items are going to do better retail than Amazon. So if you have some sort of wholesale network, some way to sell items in other, in other channels, then uh, that's something to keep in mind. Also, uh, the item may be valuable if you hold on to it. If there's no other big supply coming on, you might be able to hold on to it and then bring it back on the market later. So yeah. uh, that's, there's always other options. Yeah. You, you know. Ewan, you've been in the Amazon space for a long time now. What are mm-hmm. some of the horror stories that you've seen? Um, well, I mean, there's, there's always a couple of times that very 
competitors have managed to have their older customer items uh, priced to a penny. I think it happened at least twice. What do you mean? What happened? Well, for some reason, like uh, a bunch of people using a certain software ended up overnight having all their items priced at a penny or something similar. And then, so it was a big mess because um, uh, first they wouldn't, you know, obviously they would lose a lot of money if they fulfill the orders. If they don't fulfill the orders and they cancel the orders, they get in trouble with Amazon. Right. Uh, so it's, you know, that that's always the nightmare scenario, scenario if you have a repricing software. I mean, it hasn't happened to us. So, you know, that's kind of the one thing that, the main thing you have to worry about when you're running a repricing software that you have the potential to. If Did you don't someone do that on purpose? Yeah. Like they reprice it to a penny so that their competitors, it would go to a penny or what? No, I think it was a bug. It was oh. very easy to have I a see. bug, you know, that if you not, don't have the proper mechanism in place, you can have bugs that have that sort of effect, you know? Right. Um, so, but um, there's, um, you know, there's always... Uh, that that's kind of the first thing that came to my mind, yeah. but um, because we were talking about account shutdowns too, right? Mm -hmm. so. so that has started to happen a lot more in the last few years compared mm -hmm. to what we were used to. So we, you know, we've seen we've sort of acquired over the year a lot of experience because having a lot of customers use our software, we also hear stories from them. We hear we see what else they have problems with. So when mm -hmm. we so when we see that they have problems with their accounts getting shut down, we learn kind of what are the typical problems. And then um, we are able to help them with, with, with things like that. Yeah. So in, in this case, a lot of times people just don't think it's going to be a problem. Even, even though looking from a distance, like, come on, that's pretty clear. That you can have a problem with that sort of thing, you know. Like what? They, What's... So... You know, they... Because um, you may see it clearly because you've probably been doing it yeah. for so long and to them it wasn't so obvious, obviously. Right, right. Well, they basically, a lot of things have to do with how you get your items and whether or not they're um, um, legit, if they're, they're uh, genuine items. If you... Um, this is not happening so much anymore, but at some point people would go and just buy stuff from Alibaba. And then you buy some things from Alibaba and you think that it looks like the right thing. And you think, oh, why should I ask that brand if I can sell? I'm not going to ask the brand if I can sell the product. It's available on Alibaba. I can buy it there and put it on Amazon. You know, and then, <laughs> oh, and then you it's get... It's a fake. Oh, it's, well, one, it's a lot of cases... It's a fake, and it's very hard to find that it's a fake because you may get a few that look really good, and then you start getting ones that where the packaging is all wrong. So one, it's a fake, and two, the brand you're not an authorized um, dealer for that brand. The brand has not authorized you to sell. You're not an authorized yeah. distributor. You don't like, have a choice. Right. Uh, so yeah. it does uh, seem obvious when you say that. Yeah, like yeah. I'm not gonna go buy like a bunch of Nike shoes on Alibaba and then sell them as. But but some brand, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I mean, it's it's tricky because uh, Amazon. There's these two conflicting uh, interests in Amazon. On one hand, they want people to have as much uh, selection as possible, and Amazon doesn't have access to some brands. So sometimes Amazon does events. Like a few years ago, we went to an event that had the top 200 electronic seller. So there's all the different category managers, subcategory managers, electronics, and each one of would go and say, these are the brands you guys should go for because we can't get them. So if you go and get this brand on Amazon, you know, you won't compete with us, with, the, with retail Amazon. So you do well. So, so on one hand, Amazon wants to have as much selection as possible. So, and that, from that point of view, they want people to have brands, uh, especially the brands that they are tight. Yeah. On the other hand, they don't want to get in trouble. So that if someone complains, they have to do something about it. So, you know, it's a, it's a conflicting set of messages. And that's why sometimes people think it's okay because they got away with it for a long time, um, doing having sort of a, a dubious source of merchandise. And all of a sudden, they can't get away with it anymore. Right. Um, 
you know, there's all, all kinds of tricks that people use and then it works for a while and then it doesn't work anymore. So one, so I'm looking, so you have celery, right? So it's a repricer. It automatically reacts to your competitor's price changes. You have the seller engine plus, which manages the FBA shipments on their schedule, creates ship uh, print mm -hmm. labels, researches new products, and then you have Profit Bandit. So yeah. what made you decide to purchase Profit Bandit? Um, so we, it was basically a natural extension for us to be able to support. We wanted to support people all the way from getting started on Amazon to growing and being a big success, successful Amazon seller. Yeah. So um, basically Profit Bandit allows people to understand to get started and understand the market on their own and run their own little experiments. Right. Uh, so um, we we had that with Seller Engine Plus to some extent, but obviously it's a desktop application that you know it's ten year old, it's from ten years ago. So we got profit as a way to, to allow people to have that initial experience and start to run experiments and see what works. It's and a mobile. It it's more mobile. Yeah. So yeah, it works on iPhone and Android. So basically, you can go around anywhere any trade show and if you and scan any barcode it'll tell you this item it costs this much you can see in the store or the trade show how much it costs it'll tell you how much profit you'll make if you sell it on amazon wow. because it'll automatically retrieve the price for amazon it'll calculate the profit for you it'll tell you if you sell this item on fba this is how much you'll make mm. and you know this is the whole retail arbitrage that people have been talking about for a long time it basically you it allows you to start business while doing your, you know, your daily errands. You go to an outlet store. Or you but go you to, go to like Target or something, you're saying. Yeah, and people have gone and done things like that everywhere. Office people has the clearance aisle, right? So they have some stuff they're getting rid of or staples. And you can see that um, an item, you can see how much the item is. You can scan it. It'll tell you this is how much this item is on Amazon. So... That's you're exploiting market inefficiencies. There's, there's things that people are getting rid of in bulk because they can't sell it on their own channel. You take it and put it on a different channel and put it on Amazon. Right. So, for example, in here in Oregon, we have this chain called Grocery Outlet. So there's uh, I, the stuff that has stuff that's deeply discounted. It can be anything from food to um, kitchen stuff to bathroom stuff and then you you find stuff that can be really expensive but you get it at 30 percent of their retail price and you can see that stuff that's quite rare so if people don't like it here in oregon they might like it somewhere else and they might do really well with it on amazon right. so that's the that basically allows anyone to start a business because you can find an item and you put it on amazon and that's it and you know you know, you can manage your cost. You know how much you invested in it. If you don't sell it, you can probably use it or <laughs> whatever you bought. And then, uh, so that that was really exciting to me. We're seeing all this community of people that are able to get started and have this yeah. uh, urge. I, I can do it too. All it takes is like scan something yeah. and it does the math for you and then you mm. see how it works. And and it's not just like retail arbitrage. It's also trade shows. If you once you sort of graduate from retail arbitrage, you want know, to get more serious about it. Mm. You can use it to get into items that you're not that familiar with. So you might start, let's say, you're really knowledgeable in, in sunglasses or in books or something. So you've been selling books or you've been selling sunglasses, but now you know you're, you have a problem with your supplier or books are not working anymore. You can transfer your experience of knowing how to sell those categories into other categories by using a tool like this to become familiar with other categories. So how would someone use it at a trade show? Would they have to be current selling brands that are on Amazon? Sorry? Would oh. it have to be current selling brands that are on Amazon um, that, oh, that are I mean, being sold? It depends on the trade show. You know, uh, I, so My example of the trade show is either if you're... Um, there's two situations. One, you, you already set up with certain distributors. So you already have relations with distributors at that trade show and you've been buying from them. But having a, a way to scan their product quickly allows you to make a lot more decisions, a lot better decisions. You know, instead of like going and 
spending half an hour at a booth, you just scan a few things and see is this does that have any chance of working or not? And then you now it's worth to have a conversation with that person or not. Interesting. Um, and the uh, because for example, you could, might scan something and see it's not Amazon at all. There's no results. That could actually be a really good situation. Yeah. Nobody has this thing, and then you um, I. You can try to negotiate. Hey, can you give me the exclusive? Here's what I've been doing. Give me the exclusive of carrying just this one product on Amazon or just this one brand. Now, the other situation is where you actually don't know. You don't have a relationship with distributors. Uh, you're sort of been doing retail arbitrage and it's kind of, some things are working, some things are not working. And you want to be more serious about it. Then you'll have you, the profit band and other tools like this allow you to have almost the same experience or the same power of judgment that someone has a lot of experience because you go and see, okay, this is a good sales rank right. price. I can buy this many from you because I, you know, I rely on this data. I know how this data works in other, because I've tested it with mm. other products. And I can transfer my knowledge in this domain. So, you know, what happened to the original Chinese guy who started the first software? Well, we, we worked together until about 2004, 2005, and then he sort of got bored because it wasn't growing fast enough for him. He wanted to make more money, he sort of started doing other things. I mean, he still doing, does Amazon-related things, but he sort of made a partnership with another guy who was selling books, and so he just went in a different direction. I was more like, we sort of had, I was more... I didn't look at the business from a big enough point of view of back then. And so I just wanted to support my family. And then he was like more impatient also. And then um, it was tricky um, to um, to agree on a lot of things like hiring people. And we tried to hire people in, in China at the beginning because he was in China and it, it didn't work. Like uh, how can you get along with them or to organize. So um, it didn't, Kind of, it didn't work out. Did you take it take out. it over then? Yes. So I, I then I took it over. Yeah. Nice. So, talk about um, some of the software and tools you recommend outside of your own. Obviously, you recommend the Profit Bandit, Celery, Seller Engine Plus. What other tools out there do you find that are um, that sellers are using that are helping them in conjunction with yours? Right. Um, so there's uh, a lot of software for order management so and like printing labels so Adisha is always a good software it's being very solid from the beginning and there's other things like ship ship station so um so you need something solid that allows you sort of to do that part um and there's um things that have to do with um uh, more the marketing side which we, you know, metrics on your views and which um, I'm not as familiar with, but you know, with, um, um, so I don't have anything off the top of my head, but that's something that we haven't really approached yet. Um, but that's something, especially for a private label person that you, you would need. Mm -hmm. Merchant words, for example, is a cool tool that I like and uh, it's also sort of a small company where the founder is approachable. You can talk to them and understand how it works and everything. So um, there's a lot of tools like that in, on the Amazon space where um, basically it starts with someone who's uh, selling and who realizes that something, there's something very specific need that they can't fulfill and then they have to use something, some software for that. So, and then they start, they do the software and it is very specific. Uh, I mean, there's seller labs for the people at seller labs are cool, and they're the ones that wear white coats at conferences. And they they started also selling on Amazon, and then so they they know the space very well. I I would say basically, I would always go with someone who has experience. Yeah. In they stuff. started with books too, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, most people with Amazon, if they've been around long enough, they had to start with books. Right, too. that's what Amazon exactly. So, and that's the easiest thing to. It was the easiest thing to do. So I would say, you know, if you if you have to choose between sort of a, a venture capital company that started because someone, you know, had a big business plan, they thought it was a good growing market, 
versus someone who started because they they knew they had a need. Are, you know, I would I, what the needs of a seller are. I would go with that person. I would go with someone who's a smaller company who has experience actually selling on Amazon yeah. and who is independent. Like uh, we never had venture capital, so we can make our own decisions. We don't have the investor saying, "Hey, you have to raise your prices. You have to get this many more users because you have to." you know, go public or something or yeah. we can get our money back. You want the, thank you so much for one. This has been mm -hmm. very valuable. I have one last question for you. Everyone mm -hmm. should check out sellerengine.com and they have some really cool products like we talked about, Profit Bandit, Celery, Seller Engine Plus, and they even have some services where you can, uh, I think there's a rescue your account service and uh, uh, international account service and some other things. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to ask you, Ewan, what um, did we not talk about with the seller engine journey that would be important or seller engine general products that would be important to talk about? Um, I would say, I mean, we, we talked about it. I would say just, uh, you know, trust yourself and uh, start a, a business. And um, I, that's my main message. And if you're already doing the business, just keep looking for new things and do experiments, run more experiments and try new things. And uh, other things like we can help you stay out of trouble. Basically on the services side, there's lots of ways to get in trouble on Amazon. And we over the years have figured out how to keep people out of trouble. And that's something we focus on. And so we have a lot of people who come to us when their Amazon account has got suspended or shut down, but we want to help people before they get to that point. We want to help people figure out how to prevent that by monitoring the, the right metrics in their account, by establishing the right practices. So the, what, that's one thing we're excited about is to help people uh, take care of those things. It's just kind of a basic insurance for your Amazon account that, you know, if you buy insurance for your car for other things, why wouldn't you buy insurance for Amazon account? Because what it, is there anything else in your life that can get shut down and <laughs> go from a thousand dollars a day or uh, to nothing that, uh, so what's your protection? You know, how you protect yourself against that? And so you do monitoring of that or what do you do? Yeah. We, so we help people obviously when something, when there's a problem, we help people by monitoring all the right things. If they sign up with us, uh, we ha help them do account monitoring, which is we look at all the metrics that are important that Amazon looks at, and we look at all the warnings they get from Amazon. We make sure that they either we respond for them or we show them how to respond in a proper way to all the Amazon warnings, all the Amazon uh, notifications, uh, and how to change their practices based on the kind of notifications and warnings they get. Because people get into various habits and they see all these Amazon things and they tend to ignore them. Right. Because it, it becomes even, like white noise. Um, yeah. What? Yeah. So if you ignore certain things for too long, then you will get in trouble. It's pretty straightforward. And uh, you might think that all your things are green, all your metrics are okay, but you're ignoring some other things that are important that um, you shouldn't be ignoring. So that's uh, something we're excited about that we're able to offer yeah. based on our experience over time. One. Thank you so much. This is great. Everyone should check. And you're going to be a Prosper show, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, check out sellerengine.com and um, we'll see you at the Prosper show. Okay. All right. See you. Bye. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.